Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're here to discuss the 2023 USPS Postal Promotions. Uh, we had a wildly successful year uh, in 2022 with these promotions. Uh, we anticipate it to be even more wildly successful this year. Um, so we're, uh, we're here to kind of go over some of the great opportunities the post office has presented with us uh, for postage savings. Uh, but first, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, please enter your questions at any time, really, in the, uh, the Q&A box that you have available to you. Uh, we'll be addressing them kind of at the end, toward the end uh, of the presentation. Um, but by all means, if you think of them as we're going through, just drop them in there and we will uh, address them as we go through. All right, some introductions to start. My name is Alex Newell. I'm the Senior Manager of Postal and Supplier Security here at Production Solutions. And with me, I have... I'm Michelle Johnston. I'm the Senior Manager of Strategic Development here at PS. Great. Uh, but first, a little bit about Production Solutions. Uh, we've been running these promotions for our clients for, for many, many years. Uh, last year and each year uh, previous has been, honestly, our most successful year. Uh, we had a record-setting one last year, um, but we're adding more and more clients to our, our docket of uh, successful promotions takers, and, uh, and we're here to help share some of our knowledge that we've had. We're anticipating this presentation to go out to kind of a wide variety of attendees, both those who have attended uh, and done promotions in the past and complete newbies. Um, so first we kind of wanted to start with really the most new and exciting parts about the promotion. Um, and just an order here from the ones that we have in the list, uh, the TSI Sensory and Interactive Promotion, uh, Tactile Sensory and Interactive Promotion, TSI, will be increasing their discount from four to 5% this year. The personalized color trans promo promotion will have an additional 1% if you're including reply mail, which most of us are. The emerging technology has merged with the old mobile shopping promotion of years past and now runs for a full seven months. So you get an extra couple of months there out of that promotion. The informed delivery promotion uh, is honestly our largest one at Production Solutions, um, but we are anticipating not much has changed with that one, except for the additional half percent discount for the eDoc submitter. So um, for those of you out there, that's, that's the one who last touches the mail before it goes to the post office. So think of your mail shop, your co-mingle partners, sometimes your logistics partners um, will be able to take advantage of that half percent discount. But uh, the owner of the mail, uh, the, the mail agency, any of those folks uh, would be uh, out of the loop for that half percent. Then we have uh, two additional new, uh, new promotions this year, the reply mail IMBA promotion and the retargeting promotion. We'll talk a little bit more about those uh, in detail as we go along. The earned value promotion, which was uh, kind of a hot topic over the past years, uh, has been discontinued. Um, I'm sure some of you will be happy about that. Some of you will be sad about that. Uh, but we're hoping there'll be plenty of savings to, to go around through these other promotions. And then the other main detail that is changing this year is the pre-approval process. Whereas in years past, we were getting pre-approval through email or sending in actual samples of our mail pieces. Now the post office is running the entire pre-approval process through the mailer promotion portal. Um, so we'll share some details about how to log into that, sign in for that, and the whole uh, pre-approval process uh, as well in length. So with that, let's get into the promotions themselves. And first we're gonna talk about well, the calendar. So this is a, a great overview of our, uh, of our production solutions promotions calendar. This will be available to you by a QR code at the very end of this presentation, uh, which will take you to our website, uh, which will have both uh, our, this calendar the full deck and uh, some other useful tools that we uh, would like to share with you as well. Um, but just kind of a, a quick intro on how to read this. Uh, we broke each promotion down into a yellow bar and a purple bar. The yellow bar tells you uh, the time range that you have to register or enroll in this promotion. And you can see each one uh, starts a little bit in advance of the purple bar, which is when the promotion itself actually runs, when you would actually need to mail your mailing to take part in this promotion. Um, over there on the right, we have the 2023 maximum savings that you can get from each promotion. 5%, 3 to 4%, we'll be talking about 
some of the details there as well. But you'll notice that each of those discount amounts says up to. And the main reason for this is that a lot of the postage rates that we have out there uh, aren't just postage uh, for, for a variety of reasons, but mainly in a lot of cases, a commingle rate, uh, for instance, includes both the postage and the freight. The discount itself is only on the postage. Um, and as we know, the postage rate can kind of vary. Um, if you don't have a flat rate, you might be working with a variety of postal rates across your whole mailing. So um, we like to caution everybody that it's not as easy as just saying, okay, this is what I have budgeted for the promotion. I'm going to expect to get 5% off of my postage on it. And that's that. It's not, unfortunately, that easy as most things are with the post office, unfortunately. All right, so let's talk about the first one here. Um, and we'll kind of go through these promotions in calendar order. And we'll start with the first one here, the tactile, sensory, and interactive promotion, uh, which enrollment started uh, last week, actually. So we're in the process of enrolling several of our clients in this one already. Uh, the promotion itself will start on February 1st and run through the end of July. And the discount, like we had mentioned before, is up to 5%. So out of that extra 1% here. So this could be a fairly big one for a lot of you. Um, the eligible mail classes are pretty much everything that a lot of you are mailing right now. Uh, first class, letters, cards, and flats, marketing mail, nonprofit mail, um, almost everything qualifies here for this promotion. And as promised, we'll talk about the promotion approval process here. So um, the first step is the same as last year. Register or enroll in the promotion through the business customer gateway. This needs to be done in your organization's uh, business customer gateway account. But once you're enrolled, you just need to do it once. Once for the year per promotion um, does the job. You don't need to do it with each mailing. Uh, as long as you're registered, even if you're thinking about doing or taking part in this promotion, we uh, urge you to register for it. Uh, the enrollment process itself takes only a couple of minutes. We're doing it on our end for our clients, but um, uh, in, in most cases, but it does take just a couple of minutes to do it. So it's fairly simple. Then you need to enroll in the mailer promotions portal. This is another uh, task that we're taking uh, in hand for a lot of our clients. Uh, we're enrolling ourselves and getting pre-approval on their behalf. But if you wish to do it yourself, by all means, uh, go into the business customer gateway and look for the mailer promotions portal and you can log in yourself and start the pre-approval process as well through there. Um, I will caution you that enrolling in the MPP isn't as simple as just creating a, a login information, a username and password. It does take a couple of days for the post office to verify that your name and email address actually are linked to your organization. Don't ask me why. Again, it's one of those oddities that the post office goes through, but it does take a couple of days. Then on a mailing by mailing basis, you'll create a service request in the MPP, one for every mailing or component that you're planning on taking part in the promotion. Um, and for most promotions, say the informed delivery or the mobile shopping, you would just submit a PDF with that service request number. It would go to the post office and they'll hopefully sign off on it fairly quickly. That's one major benefit that we saw this fall with the uh, mailer promotions portal is how quickly these approvals were coming through. Uh, for the informed delivery promotion uh, last fall, for instance, they have up to four days to provide us with approval, but we were seeing approval in a matter of hours, if not minutes, in a lot of cases. So we're anticipating this MPP to really be a boon for these promotions. For the TSI promotion specifically, you actually do need to mail in either a full mail piece or the qualifying component uh, to the TSI promotions office. And we put up the, uh, the address there that you would send that to. Um, when you create that service request, it'll actually output a submission letter that you'll print off and include with your mail piece or qualifying component uh, when you send it in. And the approval will come right back into the mail of promotions portal. So um, everything should be handled fairly seamlessly from there on out. So right. I'm going to pass it over to Michelle and she's going to talk about what qualifies and what doesn't. So... The spirit of this particular promotion is really about enhancing the mail. And if you remember that, it makes some of these qualify versus not qualify make a lot more sense. So what does qualify? Um, specialty inks, um, specialty scents, so uh, fragrances, things like textured elements, 
um, interactive elements, so usually affixed pieces. Um, so I'm going to point out a couple of the highlights that I think uh, we've seen probably the most interest in. Um, clean release cards and affixed member cards. So if you are um, affixing a card to your mailing and the donor has to actually pull it off, then that can qualify for this promotion. They probably will not take perf out cards. We've not seen any indication that that will happen, but anything that's been affixed to another piece in the mailing. Um, 3D elements. So this is sort of any kind of intricate fold so you want to stay away from things like gate folds, iron crosses, accordion folds, things that are considered fairly standard, um, and think a little bit outside the box uh, in these. Um, trailing edge envelopes. So if you've seen the envelopes that have like a die cut shape on one end, that's a trailing edge envelope. Those will qualify. One thing that we did find last year, and we've sort of pre-confirmed this year we'll go through, is that uh, we did have some success with gloss and matte paper. So we submitted uh, last year a bunch of our calendars and um, that gloss alone qualified for the promotion. We have not tried it necessarily with every component that could be done on gloss paper, and we want to be real clear about that. We did, we have had buck slips that were uh, not approved. It needs to be a significant portion of the mailing or a significant component of the mailing. So, um, but think about what you're doing on coded stock that might qualify, coded envelopes, um, coded uh, brochures, that sort of thing. Now, when you talk about what doesn't qualify, we're going to see that these are a lot of things that are probably more common. Stickers and labels do not qualify. I know they're glossy, but they don't qualify unless you are adding something special to them, like holographic foil, um, metallic ink. And uh, metallic ink does have to be actual ink with metal in it, not just a gold color, but actual metallic gold ink. Um, embossed stocks that are common are not allowed. So things like linen embossed would not be allowed, but if you're embossing a name or a logo into something, then that would be allowed. Laminated postcards are not allowed. Anything with the reply envelope is not going to be approved. So it needs to be a piece that's going to stay with the donor or with the customer. Um, and then the other one I want to kind of point out is um, snap packs. So um, the envelopes that have the perf off tab on, on the short end is called a snap pack. Those are not allowed. However, if you have a zipper pull or a pull tab, that would qualify. So we've got some pictures on the next couple of slides to kind of help talk through these. So metallic inks, holographic inks or foils. So this is an example of the pull tab. So you can see this is not a tear off on the edge, but instead actually rips open the entire envelope. That's the kind of interactive that they're looking for. Um, clean release cards and embossed cards, if they are affixed to the forms, will qualify. Um, and then on the next slide, this is a picture of one of the trailing edge envelopes, embossed papers, gloss varnishes and coatings, non-geometric die cuts. And then this is where the big caveat comes to all this. This list is by no means representative of everything that someone could do that might qualify for this promotion. So if you have any question, if you think, hmm, I wonder if they would allow this, I would test it. It doesn't cost you anything to get into the promotion. You can register for it and never use it. But if there's anything that you're producing that you think might fit into one of these categories and they haven't specifically said that it doesn't, we really suggest that you send a sample in and see what they say. It's the best way to find out 
if you're going to get approved. And it is the best way that this promotion is going to grow. That's how that does qualify and does not qualify list is going to expand over time is people trying it. Um, and, you know, think about, again, think about what the post office is trying to achieve by doing this, right? The whole point is about enhancing the mail. So if what you're producing is enhancing your mail piece in some significant way, it's worth sending in and asking. Yeah, it's going to be kind of an ongoing theme here. You'll hear from us is uh, the, the cost benefit analysis of a lot of these. And like Michelle said, it costs you nothing to enroll in this promotion. In a lot of cases, you're already doing some things that might be kind of borderline, uh, borderline accepted for these. Just send it in, give it a shot. It's, uh, you know, it might be worth it just to get the discount, especially on this one, 5% of your, uh, up to 5% of your postage um, being uh, discounted on it. It's, it's definitely worth a shot uh, trying it out and sending it in. Um, and the other theme that we're gonna be talking about a lot here is making sure that you're not budgeting for these. Um, again, kind of goes back to that up to language that we had in the beginning. You know, it's not something that you can 100% say that you're going to get in all cases. You know, it's the post office. We might still see some things that for whatever reason they say no to. And there you are at the point of mailing, it's already submitted to the post office and they said no and they haven't given you a reason why. You've done everything you possibly can for it, but there's a small chance, very small in most cases, that you might not get the discount. So consider it a bonus, don't budget for it. All right, let's talk about the next one. Personalized color trans promo. Uh, the start dates and the promotion dates are the same as the TSI. Uh, enrollment started last week. The promotion will run from February through the end of July. This discount is up to four or 3%, and we'll get into um, the details explicitly for why, but it basically comes down to whether you're including a reply envelope or not. To get into this promotion, you would need to be printing a digital variable imagery on a bill or a statement and mailing it first class. And you notice we didn't put the, uh, the handy recommended uh, star sticker on the top of this one because of a lot of those, uh, a lot of our mailings don't fall into that category. This promotion is kind of specifically designed for commercial clients that are mailing out monthly or regular invoices and are putting some sort of uh, digital variable imagery up to two or more images on those bills or statements when they're being sent out. The next one is recommended, the emerging and advanced technology, which now includes mobile shopping, which is the main reason why it's recommended this time. Um, recommended and why we put those stars on there really kind of goes back to that cost benefit analysis theme that we have. Um, is it worth um, the lift needed to take part in the promotion to get the discount? Um, this one is gonna be a prime example of a lot of things that qualify for this promotion really cost a lot more than the discount uh, that you're gonna get back uh, is. So it might not be worth it unless you're already doing it. Um, this enrollment will start the middle of March and the promotion itself runs from May through the end of November. Again, the, that much longer timeline on this one. Um, the discount can be either up to 4% or up to 3%, depending on whether you're using enhanced or advanced tech. That's their language, not ours, and I'll explain what it means in just a minute. Uh, the eligible mail classes are almost everything again. So first class marketing mail, letters, cards, and flats. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities here. Uh, so what is required? Well, to Michelle's point, the theme, the spirit of this promotion is to use some sort of advanced technology in your mailings. Um, so augmented reality, virtual reality, voice assistant, or mobile shopping. Um, so the advanced versus enhanced categories are broken down here. Augmented reality, voice assistant integration like Alexa, Siri, Google, Google Home, any of those can qualify for an up to 3% postage discount. Uh, mobile shopping falls into that category as well. Again, one that we consider a relatively easy lift. You know, it's not that hard to just print a QR code and create a landing page um, on a vast majority of your mailings. The one caveat that we need to call out here is like the TSI promotion, you can't print that QR code on something that's going to be returned. So you can't put it on a reply envelope. You can't put it on a reply slip. You can put it on the carrier, 
You can put it on the letter, anything that the recipient is going to keep and can actually use that QR code uh, will qualify for this one. Um, the en enhanced tech options uh, for an up to 4% postage discount really fall into that category of the juice isn't worth the squeeze. It's gonna cost too much to implement in a multi-step uh, advanced voice assistant, uh, video and print, near field communication, mixed reality, virtual reality, any of these things are gonna be a fairly substantial cost. But if you're already doing them, then by all means, go for it. Try to take part in this promotion. Um, so Michelle, you wanna talk about a couple more examples here? Sure. So uh, the two that we've seen in the mail um, have obviously been QR codes. I think those are pretty uh, widely used at this point. The QR code must go for nonprofits, should go to a donation page. Otherwise, they should go to a shopping site for commercial. Uh, this is an example from Feeding America where they actually are printing this on the back of an OE. And it says to give online, scan here, or visit the QR code. Um, and then uh, the other one we've seen is we have a client who's running campaigns that include virtual assistant command commands. So I'm going to apologize if mine goes off in a second, but uh, this is, you can actually set up through, um, through Google or through Amazon for them to uh, be able to donate directly to a charity by giving a command to your virtual assistant. So in this case, again, printed on the back of an OE, um, the American Lung Association has set up a donation phrase. If you say that to your Alexa, then she will allow you to donate directly through Amazon. Um, and then the other example for 3% is enhanced augmented reality, which is essentially uh, when you hold your phone up to a still image and it becomes a moving image in your phone or tablet in this case. Um, then on the more expensive side, and again, if you're not already running these, I'm not sure cost-wise that it would be worth it, but uh, video and print, so actually sending a print piece that has the plays video. Mixed reality, which is uh, a blend of physical and virtual spaces. So if you've ever seen an app that allows you to like place furniture within your room, that is a mixed reality setting. Near field communications, where there's a chip embedded into the mailer and whenever your phone gets near it, it allows you to pick up that chip and play video or go to a site. And then finally, virtual reality, um, this is actually a mailer that went out, a uh, VR headset that was mailed out. I, I do not have the ability to know how that would even work, but it has been done on the commercial side. And these would all qualify for 4%. All right. Uh, next, we'll talk about probably our most successful one here, production solutions for informed delivery. Uh, again, another one that's recommended because it's relatively light lift to implement versus the amount of discount that you're going to get back. Um, we don't know, and I'll just give a caveat here up front, we don't know everything about this promotion. The official guidebooks for this, as well as the two brand new promotions, have not been released by the post office, but we expect them to come out sometime in February. Um, so we'll be sure to update everybody once we have that information. That said, we expect the informed delivery promotion to be largely the same as last year. Um, the dates should be, we know the dates are the same. Um, the enrollment will start in the middle of June and the promotion will run again from the start of August through the end of the year. And the discount should be the same as well, up to 4%. The one difference is that additional half percent postage discount that goes to the eDoc submitter. So the mail shop, the commingler, whoever's the last organization to touch the mail before it goes to the post office would be the one uh, be able to, to be able to take care of, take part in this promotion. Um, the reason why we think that they've added this half percent discount is because by far, although it has been minimal, informed delivery is the one that we've run into and we've talked to other organizations that have run into the most issues with getting this one approved. And a lot of the issues tend to come kind of at that point of mailing, which is why you find out about it really when it's already too late to do much about it. So we're hoping that this additional discount for the eDoc submitter will help smooth out some of those bumps of this uh, promotion in hopes uh, that we can all take part in it uh, for all of our mailings. 
again, the eligible mail classes would be most of what we're doing. So first class automation, letters, cards, and flats, marketing mail, nonprofit mail, uh, we'll all be able to take part in this promotion. So some examples uh, for those of you who haven't seen informed delivery, I know it's getting more and more widespread out there, but there are two main categories that informed delivery fall into that will both qualify for this promotion. The one on the left there shows a grayscale scan of the actual mail piece that will be arriving at the recipient's mailbox. And the one on the right there has a representative image that's a full color static image that shows up for all recipients that, uh, that are receiving their mail piece that day. Um, and then the smaller image down below. But all of these things should qualify for the promotion again this year. Another example that we had come up uh, fairly often is uh, changing out the representative image with a similar image to what the carrier is. The regulations say for informed delivery that the representative image must match the carrier itself. So that's kind of part of how informed delivery works is you're expecting to get this mail piece in the mail. but they are being a little bit more lenient with it in the past year where they're allowing something like this to go through where it's not an image of the carrier itself, but it's using the same image that is on the carrier. So this one would also qualify. So again, kind of falls into that category of, you know, by all means, just try it out. You know, worst case scenario is you don't get it, but as long as you're still considering it a bonus, it should, uh, it should not affect you. So let's talk about some of these potential challenges that we talk, uh, brought up there at the start. Um, these are things that, again, in the grand scheme of things with as many informed delivery campaigns as we submitted last year, these came up probably the most often, but again, a very small percentage of the overall mailings that we did. But we figure it's worthwhile putting them out there so that you can get in front of them uh, to start before you go into this uh, promotion. First and foremost, planning. If you're planning to do informed delivery really at any time of the year, you should be thinking about it up front, especially if you plan on testing it. If you're just going to give a standard campaign to the entire mailing, there's less thought that's involved in it. But if you plan on testing informed delivery and using different treatments for different segments of your mailing, get out in front of it. Make sure your data providers are aware of it and they're segmenting your mailing properly for it. Um, Timing is another big part of it. If you don't have an informed delivery campaign live and active at the point of mailing, you won't get the discount. So this is a very important one. We, we tend to put in our informed delivery campaigns and have them start two days ahead of the mail date just to make sure in case for whatever reason, the mail entry partner being the mail shop or the commingler tends to accidentally or has accidentally submitted it a day early. So this will hopefully overcome and has overcome uh, uh, this issue for us in the past. The details in the IMB, uh, for those of you that aren't aware, informed delivery operates off of the IMB. So the IMB that's printed on each mail piece contains the mailer ID, the MID, as well as a serial number. And that serial number identifies that specific piece so that when the IMB is scanned by the post office and it sees a MID and a serial number that match up with an informed delivery campaign that's active in their portal, that's when it triggers the email to go out. So those two pieces of information are absolutely critical. If they're off for whatever reason, when the mailing gets submitted to the post office and they go to check that there's an informed delivery campaign associated, this is what they're looking for. They're looking for the mid and the serial number that is associated with a live and active informed delivery campaign. And technically, as long as you have that, those two pieces of information, it should go through fine. But we did have some issues where for whatever reason, a mail shop might send the mail file out for new IMBs at some point, which gives us new serial numbers. So we may have already submitted an informed delivery campaign to the post office, but then at some point the serials got updated and changed on the actual mail pieces and they're, they're different at the point of mailing. Um, quantities are another big part of it. Um, dropping a couple suppressions out at the last minute aren't as big a deal, but if for whatever reason you're submitting a mailing that has a higher quantity than what we have submitted in form delivery, you won't get the discount there either. So it's very important to make sure that the total quantity in your serial number range matches up with the total quantity on your mailing. Um, the e-doc itself. So when the mail shop or the commingler are submitting the e-doc for this mailing, they need to check off a box for this promotion. So this is a, kind of goes back to that, hoping that additional half percent discount for the e-doc submitter will smooth out some of those cracks because 
Well, they now have some skin in the game, right? Um, and lastly, the mailing type. So for informed delivery, it needs to be automated, meaning it needs to have an IMB on it, and it needs to mail as full service. There are times on almost every mailing, really, that a handful of pieces might fall out of automation. Uh, you know, maybe the IMB isn't scannable for some reason or something like that. So this is just a kind of a cautionary tale to kind of go back and make sure that um, you're doing everything you can to make sure that everything is automated and running as full service, but to be aware that you may not see 100% of that uh, promotion discount as well. All right, let's talk about some of the new promotions. Um, so again, we don't know everything about these ones. Uh, they've released some details. We've talked to a few people in the industry about what we're expecting them to be. Um, and this is the information that we have so far. So once we have the official guidebooks in February, we'll be able to update this information. Um, the reply mail IMBA promotion. Um, again, we're still waiting on, on some more information, but it should be an incentive for those taking part in the IMBA, IMB accounting system that the post office just released. So this is a system for those of you that aren't uh, taking part in it that really smooths out the process of paying for your business reply mail permits um, and the mail going through your through those permits. Um, it's only available, however, to those who are signed up for QBRM, which is a qualified business reply mail that um, is really used by the absolute largest of mailers. Those are expecting millions of pieces coming back to them over the year. Um, and the reason I say that is because in addition to the time involved and the stricter requirements for those, that business reply mail, um, there's also an additional cost. There's a, a couple thousand dollars per quarter payment that needs to be done to the post office uh, to keep your QBRM permit active. Um, so if you are one of those higher volume mailers, maybe you're already doing QBRM and you could be able to take part in this uh, reply mail IMBA if you're uh, signed up for that uh, special accounting service. So this one will, uh, the registration will start in May and the promo will run from July through the end of the year. Um, it's only first class mail, it's only reply mail again, uh, but the discount is either up to 3% from what we're hearing or potentially up to 6% if you're using a unique IMB on the pieces coming back. So if you have a, a BRE with a static uh, IMB on it, you would get that 3% on the return. If you have a window BRE with a um, unique IMB on it, meaning it has a unique serial on it, you'd be able to take that up to 6%. Michelle, you want to talk about the retargeting? Sure. So the, the last of the promotions is retargeting. And this is really about... Um, mailers sending first class postcards to website and mobile visitors. So if you've ever gone to a website, you put something in your shopping cart and you decide not to buy it. And then you get an email that says, hey, you left something in your cart. That's a retargeted email. In this case, what they're looking for is retargeted postcards. So a week after you visited that website, you get a postcard in the mail with a coupon encouraging you to come and buy what was ever in your cart. That's a retargeted postcard. So it is only on first class postcards and it is specifically on digital retargeting. So we don't know that there's going to be a ton of interest from nonprofits on it, but you never know. Um, and the discount is up to 5%. All right, so let's talk about how you plan for 2023. Um, the first thing we always recommend is look at what you're currently mailing and start identifying those things that might qualify for whatever the promotions are. Um, take note of the dates of registration and the promotion. When are they actually mailing? Are you mailing your piece at a time that would coincide with the promotion? Make sure you're building in time for those promotions. So if you need to send in an art sample, so for instance, the TSI, make sure that you're planning this far enough ahead that you have time to mail in a sample. Test, as we said earlier, if you're not sure if it's gonna qualify, it's not specifically listed as does not qualify, try sending it in. This is how the promotion is gonna grow. And you can only run one, permission, one promotion per mailing. Now there is a caveat to this. And that is the reply mail IMBA promotion. 
technically that one could run at the same time as another promotion because one is on outgoing mail and one is on incoming mail. But that is the only time that you are allowed more than one promotion at a time. So as nice as it would be to be able to stack these discounts, that's not, uh, that's not how the USPS has built this. So these are the three that we highly recommend for nonprofit mailers in particular. Um, they are the easiest to get into and find a way to qualify for, and will bring you the largest discounts at a given time. So the first one is the Tactile Sensory and Interactive. Test anything that you're not sure is gonna qualify, send it into the USPS for approval. Any mailings between February 1st and July 31st um, for an up to 5% discount. Any mailings that do not qualify for TSI starting on May 1st and running until the end of July, add a QR code and go in for the emerging and advanced technology and mobile shopping promotion. That will get you a 3% discount. The moment those two are over, starting on August 1st, go for informed delivery. That's a 4% discount. Um, and it will get you through the end of the year. And you really should be running informed delivery on every single mailing starting August 1st. Um, if you're not running it the rest of the year, um, but if, if you wanna take part in it, every single mailing you should be putting into ID starting on August 1st. So that will get you a discount starting from February 1st all the way through the end of the year. And, um, you'll find the largest amount of those mailings between May and December. So a couple of last bits of information. Um, every single time you take part in one of these promotions, you have to remember that the post office is offering these to continue to encourage people to use the mail. So anything that you have in your mailing that tries to get people to not use the mail is probably gonna get rejected. So if you are printing a QR code and you have directional language that says, go paperless, see online statements, um, it, they're immediately gonna disqualify it. So remember that when you're looking at your mail piece, um, no matter what your promotion is, but, um, anytime you're printing those statements, you do not want to direct people away from the mail. The whole point is to promote the mail. As Alex pointed out, do not budget for these promotions. This is a bonus savings. Um, it is not guaranteed to you for any given mailing, nor is the percentage guaranteed. That up to is quite serious um, for a variety of reasons. Make sure you're planning early. Make sure you kind of go into this thinking through the process. How do you want to implement the changes so that when you get to the time of the promotion, there's no surprises? And then again, and I'll just keep saying it, you can't stack the discounts. Um, with that one caveat about the reply mail IMBA, you cannot use more than one discount per mailing at a time. You can go back and forth, one mailing on mobile shopping, the next mailing on TSI, but you can't do them both on the same. So on the next slide, um, we have a QR code. This will take you to the PS website. We have a copy of this deck along with our promotions calendar and a copy of our um, postal um, postage rate chart uh, that's been updated for the postage rate increase that's about to happen, oh, this weekend. Um, <laughs> uh, you can use the QR code that's on the screen or the web address that's below it. This deck will also be sent out by more along with the recording. So if you'd like to go back and um, catch up on any of the details, you're welcome to do that as well. So Alex, are we ready for some questions? I think so, yeah, we have a few in there already. Um, so just going from the top, uh, how many hard copies of the full appeal need to be physically shared with the USPS for evaluation? So this is talking about the TSI promotion. Uh, first off, it doesn't need to be the full mail piece. It really just needs to be the component itself. So for instance, Michelle talked about the calendars that we had success with last year. We were just sending in a sample of one calendar itself. Uh, for approval. You don't need to send in a handful. 
Um, it's really just the, the one at a time to be sent in. Um, and, you know, knowing that you probably won't have full uh, mail piece samples until right about the point that you're mailing, by all means, um, if you yourself don't send in a sample of the qualifying component, ask the printer to. Um, that's what we're doing in a few cases as well, um, just to get it out as, as soon as possible. But make sure you're printing off that submission letter to submit with that qualifying uh, component. We have a few questions about what else might qualify. Uh, fixed coins, uh, gloss card stock, brochures, embossed cards. Um, fixed coins, I think we said no, right, Michelle? Yeah, they're a little sketchy on that in the promotion. They said that coins did not qualify. Um, but, and so we sort of assume that that means a fixed coins, uh, since normally that's how you would mail them. But, um, Again, it doesn't uh, necessarily say fixed coins. Yeah. yeah. Um, gloss cards, gloss brochures. Uh, again, try it out. Uh, it doesn't specifically say the only uh, language that's included in the rules and regulations guidebook is that it must be a significant piece. So uh, we're anticipating gloss buck slips, relatively minor pieces like that probably won't qualify, but by all means, give it a shot. Um, but something larger, like if you're mailing um, gloss greeting cards or a gloss brochure or a gloss newsletter, uh, give that a shot. Um, those more, have a more likely chance of, of being approved. Um, same with embossed cards. So if you're embossing your greeting cards or something like that, um, try those out as well. Those, those should be approved. Now, embossed member cards, on the other hand, I'm not so sure of. If it's not affixed to a piece, we just don't know. Um, so that's something you would want to try and, you know, send in and ask. Yeah. Um, similar question about stamps that are paper clipped to a reply slip. It doesn't say one way or the other, specifically in the, in the rules and regulations. So that's another one that we would recommend trying. Um, it kind of fits the spirit, right, Michelle? I, I would think that kind of, you know, it's that interactive uh, mm -hmm. element that they're probably looking for. So I would think that probably would qualify. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, you mentioned that reply devices do not qualify, but glossy calendars do. If a calendar has a reply device embedded in it, does it still qualify? So theoretically, it should. Um, just like it doesn't reply, envelopes don't qualify. However, um, reply envelopes inside of the calendar should be just fine because uh, they're not really looking at the reply. They're they're evaluating the stock that the calendar's on. Yeah, and they're anticipating, again, that it, it's about the piece that the recipient's going to keep. They're going to keep the calendar. They're going to send the reply device back. So the reply device itself wouldn't qualify or, or you know, whether it's uh, um, uh, blown in uh, reply envelope, uh, buck, uh, bang tail, or something like that, or if it's actually a, a p physical piece of the calendar that you might perf out, those pieces themselves wouldn't qualify, but as long as the recipient's keeping the calendar itself, that should qualify. Um, we talked about the multiple discounts. Uh, they can't take multiple discounts for mailing, even though they do overlap, but Michelle, I think you have a great uh, roadmap for you to take uh, part in as many stack discounts one after the other as you can to get the most uh, bang for your buck. Uh, yep, a recording and slides will be sent out by more after this, uh, and you can actually scan this QR code that we have up here right now to be taken to the Production Solutions website with uh, the deck as well as our calendar, uh, promotions calendar, and the postage rate chart. Uh, let's see. When it comes to mail diversion ineligibility, does that include directions to go online to donate? This is a tricky one, I'll be honest, <laughs> because they do ask for directional copy when it comes to putting a QR code on something. Um, informed delivery uh, ride-along messaging has to have a call to action of some sort. In a lot of cases, you're asking them to donate here. You're, you're asking them to click on that message to go online and donate. Um, those type of instances with uh, directional copy telling you to uh, go to a website and donate, definitely will qualify. What they are talking about with mail ineligibility is really about putting messaging out there to take all mailings away with a particular category. So, you know, for instance, 
go online to go paperless. So to not get your mailed mailed statement any, anymore. So not just this mailing specifically, but talking about all of your mailed statements in the future. If you go here and click on this link, you can sign up for paperless. That would make you ineligible for a promotion. Hope that answers that one. Anything else to add to that, Michelle? Nope, I think you got it. Um, if you have multiple mail pieces dropping in the same time frame, can they each have a different promotion? Well, this is kind of falls into that, that category. Each mailing itself, a full mailing, can only be enrolled in, in one promotion at a time. Um, so if you're doing a mailing, getting it out on a particular mail date, and then sending the same package out, you know, a month later and it qualifies for a different promotion, that would be fine. Even if it's the same package, if it's somehow, you know, you put a QR code on both or something like that, um, you could potentially uh, get two different promotions that way. But the rule is that you can only take part in one promotion per mailing. Yes. Now you can have multiple mailings that are dropping at the same time. So say a newsletter and a, an appeal and an acquisition piece. And as long as you've treated them as three separate jobs, they could theoretically go under different promotions. You think a perf off card would qualify for the ETP discount? I'm assuming that's the TSI discount. Yeah, uh, we, we don't think so. Sorry, we don't think so. Um, we have not tested it to find out for sure. Um, it specifically mentions affixed cards, but again, because it doesn't say no specifically, I would try it. Yep. You've got a perf out card. And just rereading that the ETP is probably in reference to the emerging tech, which definitely wouldn't qualify for that yep. promotion. That's that's not an emerging or advanced technology. Um, can pieces of mail be in other languages besides English? That's a new one. I, I don't see any reason why not. Um, you know, you might have, uh, have a bit of trouble getting pre-approval because they're searching for somebody that speaks Spanish or something like that. Uh, but there's nothing in the rules that specifically calls out other languages other than English. So uh, again, we're going to keep putting this theme out there. It, if you think it might qualify, give it a shot. If it doesn't say specifically, explicitly in the guidelines that it will not qualify, give it a shot. It's worth it. Um, these discounts um, are meant, are put in place to hopefully make it a little bit easier to mail, especially as postage costs are going up and up and up now twice a year. Um, so by all means, give it a shot, try it out. Um, and like Michelle was saying, this is really their way of growing the promotion. So if they see something they hadn't thought of that they think is in the spirit of the promotion and it doesn't say it explicitly in the rules that it doesn't qualify, you might get it. So try it out. And if you get it that time, they might put it in the rules next year that it does qualify. So I think that's the end of our questions. Anything else, uh, any other questions that we need to address, drop them in the, the Q&A. Otherwise, we're going to say uh, thank you all for attending. This has been a, a hopefully an informative presentation for everybody. Um, I know we enjoyed it. And uh, like we were saying earlier, this, uh, this deck and the recording will also be sent out by more uh, immediately after this. So you should see it there as well.